Do you speak Latin? No. Is it possible that you do so without realizing it? I guarantee that you already know some of the Latin I'm going to talk about in this video. You'll also learn some new stuff in Latin to casually pepper your conversation with to make you sound super cool. But first, do subscribe to The English Nut. Thank you. Latin hasn't really been spoken in centuries. Fact? Yes and no. If you consider the many Latin phrases used in English and other languages, you might say that Latin is still being spoken. Maybe not so much as an independent language, but through its rich legacy permeating our daily conversations. Consider a simple word like extra. This common English adjective, adverb and prefix is originally a Latin preposition meaning outside or in addition to. Take the wonderful motto carpe diem, which means seize the day, or the profound philosophical statement cogito ergo sum, meaning I think, therefore I am, or even quod erat demonstrandum, which some of us might remember by its initials QED from our mathematics classes. All from Latin and all worth knowing a little more about. These plus other words you may be surprised to learn are Latin are coming up, including a bonus word, so stick around. The Roman poet Horace said carpe diem quam minimum credula postero in his work known as Odes published in 23 BC. It may be translated literally as pluck the day, trusting as little as possible in the next one. The phrase carpe diem has come to stand for Horace's entire statement and is widely translated as seize the day. Horace was neither the first nor last person to express this sentiment though. Before he wrote about it, it was a theme of Greek literature, especially of the works of the philosopher Epicurus, which were a big influence on Horace. Much later, we find its first mention in English by poet Robert Frost, whose poem titled Carpe Diem was published in 1938. Of course, the sentiment was present in English literature well before Frost. For example, it's a theme of 17th century cleric and poet Robert Herrick's poem titled To the Virgins to Make Much of Time, a poem that was a part of my school syllabus. Let me quote its first stanza. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may, old time is still a-flying. And this same flower that smiles today, tomorrow will be dying. What Herrick means is enjoy what you have today because tomorrow it may be gone. Carpe diem, seize the day. The phrase enjoyed a resurgence in popularity after it was used in the wonderful 1989 movie Dead Poets Society about an English teacher who inspires his students through poetry. If you haven't seen it, you must. One trait that may help us seize the day is that of being spontaneous. If you suddenly get good news, for example, you could decide to throw an impromptu party to celebrate it. The word impromptu comes from the Latin phrase impromptu, which literally means in readiness. The meaning of impromptu in English is to do something without planning or rehearsing. Be ready to make the most of something unexpected by doing things impromptu. Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. This famous phrase was articulated by 17th century French philosopher René Descartes or René Descartes in English. It became not only a fundamental element of his philosophy but arguably of all Western philosophy. It's the only indubitable truth according to Descartes. It is certainly not a thought he came up with impromptu. It is the only statement to survive his rigorous approach of doubting everything till you arrive at a statement that cannot be doubted. This was his logic. Assume for a moment that he, as in Descartes, did not actually exist, but an all-powerful demon was trying to trick him into thinking that he did. Yet Descartes would have to exist in the first place in order for the demon to deceive him into thinking he didn't exist. Therefore, whenever we think, we exist. Or as Descartes explained it, we cannot doubt of our existence while we doubt. Simple, isn't it? 
Descartes originally wrote his statement in French as Je pense donc je suis and later translated it into Latin, the language favored for formal writing in his day. Do you read detective stories? If you do, you would be familiar with that delicious word alibi. It refers to evidence putting someone in a place other than the scene of a crime at the time the act was committed, proving he or she did not commit the crime. Of course, there's always a catch. In Agatha Christie's Hercule Poirot detective stories, for example, every suspect would start out with a seemingly foolproof alibi, but the clever and stylish detective Poirot would poke holes in their stories and eventually deduce who the murderer was. Alibi comes from the Latin word alibi meaning elsewhere. Which brings us to QED, the abbreviation for the phrase quad erat demonstrandum, Latin for that which was to be shown, proved or demonstrated. This was translated from a Greek phrase used by early Greek mathematicians like Euclid and Archimedes. It's a formal way of ending a mathematical, logical or physical proof. It tells you that the preceding statement which was arrived at by an unbroken chain of logic was the original statement that the writer was trying to prove. For example, if you had to prove that x plus 5 equal to 0, when x equal to minus 5, you could write x plus 5 equal to minus 5 plus 5 equal to 0. QED. Paul Halmus, the Hungarian-American statistician, introduced the convention of using a solid black square at the end of a mathematical proof as a symbol for QED. This symbol is also known as the tombstone symbol. Do you like keeping things the way they are? No? Well, politicians often do. While they talk about bringing change, they find it convenient to maintain the status quo. The Latin status quo, pronounced status quo, in English is a phrase referring to the existing state of affairs, particularly with regard to social or political issues. Young people, college students in particular, don't like to accept the status quo and student movements have been known to bring about change by challenging it. And now for the bonus word of the video, which is bonus. Bonus in English comes from bonus in Latin. This is a Latin adjective simply meaning good. In English, it can refer to various kinds of good things. For working people, it typically means an extra sum of money they may receive from their employers as a reward for doing well at their job. See, there are so many Latin words and phrases in English. So yes, you've probably been speaking and writing at least partially in Latin without realizing it. If you know any other interesting Latin words or phrases, do write them below. Do subscribe to The English Nut on YouTube. Click on the bell icon too, so you're notified when a new video is released. I'm The English Nut. Bye for now.